Hello, welcome to The Watchman as we continue our study on good and bad ground and uh, the complete message is called Sowing and Reaping in which I try to answer questions about why people sow into good causes in the church and they do not get the harvest in their lives as is promised by the word of God. Now, I've described so many things. I talked about mindsets with which people say, uh, sow and I spoke about the mindset of a gambler, the mindset of a businessman, and the proper mindset of a sower. And then I went on to say that one of the characteristics of people who carry the proper mindset of a sower is that they understand the value of ground. And then I gave a parable from Mark chapter 4 in which I described how a sower went out to sow, and that was the word of God, but it could also mean your finances, and that sower um, the same sower, the same seed, and probably the same day of sowing has six different outcomes. One was eaten by the wayside, one was scorched by the sun, the other one was chopped by thorns. All those three did not produce a fruit, but some produced 30-fold, some produced 60-fold, some produced 100-fold. So six different outcomes from the same incident. The only thing that changes is the ground. Now, I telling you, how important the ground is. That's in the previous segment. Now in this segment, I'm going to tell you characteristics of good and bad ground and how you can tell that the ground in which you're putting your money is not good ground. Therefore, you might, you will not receive the expected harvest as the scripture promises. Now I'm going to use just one scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, which is up here and speaking of a number of things. And um, it's a long, I'm picking it from the Amplified Classic um, you know, translation, and it's a long scripture that describes quite a number of things here. And he says, this is Paul now writing, he says, for we are not like so many. Now, I want you to note certain things that Paul says that he, or when he says, when he says we, he means he and, he and Timothy, because they, uh, you know, they were together, are not, and then he goes on to say, like so many. Now, I want you to understand that if I say there are so many, who are doing certain wrong things, it is not my, um, uh, I'm not getting it for myself, it is Paul who said, and uh, this is in every translation of the scripture. So he says, we are not like so many, then he says, like hucksters, making a trade of peddling God's word. Now, um, I'll read the whole scripture, shortchanging and adulterating the divine message, but like men of sincerity and the purest motive, as commissioned and sent by God, we speak his message in Christ, the Messiah, in the very sight and the presence of God. I'll read that whole scripture again. For we are not like many, like hucksters, making trade of peddling God's word, shortchanging and adulterating the divine message, but like men of sincerity and the purest motive, as commissioned and sent by God, we speak his message in Christ, the Messiah, in the very sight and presence of God. Now that's 2 Corinthians 2.17 from the Amplified Classic Translation. Now I want you to notice that he divides two, he, he, he sets apart two different kinds of people here. The first part of the verse right up to there is talking about the wrong people, the, the sort of wrong people that um, perhaps you should avoid when looking for ground to sow and uh, to connect, um, uh, you know, to, to the causes of God. So he says, they are those people whom I call peddlers of the word. He, they are called here hucksters. Um, in other translation, it says, we do not peddle the word of God for dishonest gain. Now, there are people who do that, for whom the word of God is a trade. Because the word of God speaks about giving, so these people get that part of the word of God and they go and use it as a trade. And they use it kind of to, you know, to get money and uh, make their lives good, so to speak. Even if they use it for good causes, but the, the, it, it's a thin line, so you have to be extremely careful. And notice here that Paul says, we are not like many. Actually, he says, like so many. Um, so what Paul is saying here, that he, unlike so many others, does not make a trade of the word of God for dishonest gain. Now, I am not the one saying so many others, it is in the scripture. So if that was true, in the first century when he wrote this, you can bet it is true even today. There are so many who are making a trade of the word of God. That is, they are businessmen whose commodity is the word of God. They speak it purely for their benefit. And they are different from people who speak it 
from a position of revelation and who know what the word of God is and who are teaching something because it is in the word of God. Now, in, in as much as they might use the same scriptures and they might call upon people to give the same way, they are, what separates them is something different, is, uh, is something inner. Now, here is where it calls for uh, a bit of discernment. But now I'll tell you this. that So he says here, the first part of the verse, he says, there are so many who are hucksters making a trade of the word of God. In other words, peddling the word of God, shortchanging and adulterating the divine message. Why do they do that? For their gain. Okay? They shortchange it. Shortchanging means denying it of power. Now, selling it short and um, uh, denying it of power. And adulterating means changing the purpose of the message. Kind of, you know, uh, mixing it with something which is not right. So, so, what we get here is there are many, so many, unlike Paul, there are so many who are hucksters and trade the word of God. They peddle the word of God for dishonest gain. They shortchange it and adulterate it. Yet it's actually the divine message. Now then he goes on to say, now talking about himself, but like men of sincerity and the purest motive, and as men commissioned and sent by God, we speak his message in Christ, the Messiah, in the very sight and presence of God. Now you can tell these people apart if you're a discerning person. You can tell the first part, who Paul says are so many who shortchange the word of God, and then you can tell those who are speaking it out of the sincerest motive. Now I can tell you if you're looking for bad ground, the first part is bad ground. Nobody should be looking for bad ground. If you're looking for good ground, the second ground, the second part is good ground. Now, if you connect your seed or your giving to good ground, and I'm going to give you pure characteristics of that, best more, more or less on this scripture, then and with the right motive and the right ground, then you'll be one of the 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. In other words, those who reap um, a harvest from their giving. Now, before I tell you what, good, what, characterizes, what characterizes good ground, I'll tell you a bit of what characterizes bad ground. Okay? Now, bad ground, as we've read here, are people who peddle the word of God um, and who speak the message of giving for their own benefit. It's not about the benefit of the people who are giving. Because anybody who does not have in mind the people who are giving, uh, well, it's for his benefit. And I've seen so many such. Okay? Now, there are people, these people, who, are called, who I call peddlers of the word, are people who believe the message of giving was handed down for their benefit. So, somehow, they picked that part of the Bible up, they crammed those things, and they ran with them. I have seen such people in the, some of the churches that I went to. And some of them were even invited. By, um, uh, by the pastors because perhaps they needed to fundraise for a, a church project or something like that. So they call people whom I call, you know, professional fundraisers. And they come into the church and they, you know, rouse people's emotions and get a big offering and they take off. Now I'm not so sure um, uh, that kind of giving has any benefit in terms of reaping. Actually, I, I know it does not. So. And, but these people do it, and uh, they, they, there is a lot of market for them in churches because people need money for even very perfectly godly causes. But perhaps they don't have the revelation of how to get that money. So, um, so, so now one of the characteristics of peddlers of the word, um, the first characteristic is the message of giving they think was given for their benefit. The second one is that they don't practice what they preach. They talk about giving, they um, give testimonies of so many people who gave and received a lot of money and so on, but they themselves do not practice what they preach. And now here the thing, somebody who has the revelation of what he's talking about, uh, you can tell it, you can tell somebody who is speaking from their mind and who is trying to arouse emotions, and you can tell somebody who is speaking from their spirit. And the latter have mastered this thing and they know how it works. So anybody who has a discerning you know, spirit, as everyone who is listening to this should, um, should understand that this one is speaking what they do and this one is speaking what they just, for their own benefit. So these ones are peddlers, the others are, aren't. Now, so, how, you can't tell if somebody practices it or not, but you can tell from within your spirit. The third, the, the characteristic of these peddlers of the world is they are usually very stingy. I told you of, uh, the pastor whom I know who practiced the message of giving all the way until he came from total poverty and destitution. I spoke that story in the previous segment and got to a place of relative wealth where he was in some comfort and so on. And he had come there through obeying God in his word. 
and he had seen seed go into the ground and he had seen harvest. So he knew the principle. Then he came and met a certain well-known pastor who's, who, who, who kind of, I mean, and he was flattered by the attention of this well-known pastor. Now, the, the, person, the pastor who knew about giving, who I was talking about, was from some upcountry place and, you know, he wasn't that big. But then there was this pastor who is on radio, who is on TV, and who is very powerful. But everybody knew him to be stingy. So this man came and gave his money into this big pastor's ministry. And he started his descent from relative wealth all the way back close to where he came from in poverty. Why? Because this person was one of those people who peddled the word. And how do you know they peddled it? Because you, when somebody is peddling something, they keep on shouting loud, so, so, so loud about it. Now, and, and don't get me wrong, like, you can tell that somebody is, you know, um, there's something not right about the way the message is presented. Now, in, um, in, the, in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 7 and 8, I'm going to read there very fast. It says, um, now, you, you, oh, these are things which are not a distance away from somebody who decides to be perceptive. It says, um, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 7 and 8. Also, the schemes of a schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words. Now, I want you to notice this, that this... He devises words to destroy the poor with lying words. Uh, with lying words. Now I know these people who are peddlers of the word, the first category, are usually very smooth talkers. They are usually very, you know, flamboyant, and they they, they have mastered this because it's their trade. So they know which scriptures to use. They know how to ar arouse, you know, um, um, a lot of interest in the people and emotions. And then at that emotional peak, at the roller coaster, then they say, "Now give." So now then, so many people give at that time and then out of emotions and that is not out of faith and it does not yield the harvest it promises so it says here i'll read again uh, verse 7 and also the schemes of the schema are evil he devises plans he devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words even when the needy speaks justice then he says but a generous man devises generous things and by generosity he shall stand so you can tell these people apart now the first category, the peddlers of the word, stingy. They, practice, they do not practice what they preach. They say one thing and do the other. They are not givers. And you can tell that from some of their testimony. Now, and then so many of them, they call upon people to give out of need. Now, that, that's where there's a big problem in the church. Because giving is a lifestyle to people who have understood, uh, have understood it. It says here, the generous man devises you know, um, uh, plans of generosity, and by generosity he stands. So when you get into the lifestyle of giving, you don't give out of need, you give out of habit. And now those are the people who have understood the revelation of giving. Now, if, on the other hand, giving is purely based on need, now we need money for this, we need money for this, we need money for that. Now I'm not saying that there are no needs, but the point is, the, the word of God is the word of God, with or without need. So when that need is met and there are no other needs, would you stop giving? Would you stop obeying the word of God regarding giving? So there's something that is not right. And you know, in the scripture it says in 2 Corinthians 9 that we do not give out of necessity. In other words, it is not like you have to give or you are compelled to give because there is this outstanding need. Because remember, you're giving to God and God does not have any needs. You are the one who has needs. So, if you are giving out of need, there is a need for this, we need to do this, we are fundraising, that is not of God. Because you are giving God, he's the one who is going to give you the harvest, and he has no needs. Okay? Now, of course, the ministry you attend might have needs, but they should present the word of God as the word of God, regardless. And present a habit of giving. And actually, if they did that, those needs would probably be met, because people have been taught the proper word of giving. So, now, so you have to understand that... Um, you might perhaps be led to give when there is, a, let's say your church is building, you know, something, uh, they're expanding the worship center and all that. You might be, you know, led to give more because of that. But it still is not out of need. That's what's out of need. That is um, a call upon you to step up. It's all about you. It's, it's about you. Because when God asks you to step up your giving, he's actually asking you to step up 
your financial levels. That's just the way it is, if it is done the right way. So, remember, you're a soul and not a donor. Now, if you understand this, you'll have understood so many things. You are a sower, not a donor. What's the difference? A donor, you are, they need your money. Okay? They need your money. Now, a sower, they don't need your money. You need the grace upon a ministry to lift you up. To lift you up. Now, I will use the ground, let's say, as it is with the ground. The soil, if there is a good cultivated piece of land, you cannot say that land needs you. It, it, it's, uh, it's crying out for seed. A land does not cry out for seed. Okay? But the land is there. Now, if you want to multiply one grain of maize to a cob of maize, you use the ground. However, the ground is not desperate for your seed. The ground does not need your seed. You need the ground. Now, that's what the anointing is. If you find a proper anointing, and I'm going to explain to you what kind of how to look out for that, where there is a manifestation of God. Now, there will be a manifestation of increase. So when you connect your seed there, it's like a well-cultivated ground, and then you receive a harvest after some time. And it is guaranteed if you give it with the right attitude, as I've talked about here. So you're, not a, you're a sower, not a donor. Now, if you want to behave like a donor, then your attitude is wrong. You're making it look like God needs your money, which he does not. Okay? Now, so the difference is in the heart. Okay? Um... And the difference between a donor and a sower is in the attitude. Um, uh, you know, there are these philanthropists and what people who and write checks in front of the media and what those are donors and philanthropists and whatever it is they are. But they are not sowers. Sowers is faith. The Lord said something. The Lord said, "Give it will be given unto you." The Lord says, "So, so, uh, uh, you know, plentifully and you will harvest plentifully." Then you believe His word. So, it is. There has to be a faith element attached to it. So now. So then you ask yourself, um, what, uh, in, uh, what separates what fundraising from sowing? Fundraising is about, um, <laughs> is about meeting a need. You fundraise to meet a need. Sowing is about obeying the word of God. Now, if you change your mindset a little, then you will understand that you will never fall for the tricksters of peddlers of the word. You can't tell. I see them all the time. I see them on TV. I see them where, and I do not mean to say this to criticize people, but I'm not the one who said there are so many who peddle the word of God for dishonest gain because it was, it's written in the Bible. Paul says we are not like so many. He didn't even say many. He said so many. So I see them all the time. You can tell that there is something that is not right. You can tell that um, they are preaching the message of giving out of need, okay, out of necessity. And yet the scripture says, do not give out for necessity. And you can tell that there is a bit of compulsion. You know, if you do not give here, this is going to happen, this is not going to happen. And you can tell there is a soft compulsion and they are comparing people. And it's almost, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it gives, it creates a guilty feeling if you do not respond to it. Now, those are peddlers of the word. Now, in the next segment, we are, I'm going to talk about the second part. How you tell good ground apart from bad ground. And then the rest, I'll leave it up to uh, your discernment to know that this is good ground, this is bad ground. You look at somebody, you see how they are presenting the message of giving. Now, the things I'm presenting to you here are not opinions. These are things that were taught to me, all these, these scriptures were taught to me by the Lord, and I have practiced them for a number of years, and I have seen a difference. I am a minister, and I've seen a difference in my ministry. And which, whoever you are, at what, I mean, uh, a worker or anybody else, not even in ministry, these things always work. Because before I even became a minister, I learned these things and I practiced them and they worked for me. So the word of God is true. Give and it will be given to you. Running over, pressed, I mean, uh, shaken. Running over, pressed down. So shall men give it to your bosom. Now, so that is the word of God. And it is always true. The thing is, why hasn't it worked for some people? This is precisely what I'm trying to explain now. I'll end this segment right here, having told you about bad ground. Now, the next segment, I'll tell you about good ground, the second part of this verse. And then you'll know why exactly some people sow a lot of money with um, pure, I mean, pure hearts and they do not receive the promised harvest. Yet the word of God is always true. Thank you so much. You can check out the rest of the videos here on YouTube. We talk about so many things, especially the return of the Lord. But this particular message is about coming out of financial Babylon. 
There will be so many messages along this line. Be sure to watch out for all of them. Bye-bye. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and look out for our next podcast. Get in touch with us on Facebook, The Watchman, on Twitter, at UG Watchman, and on Instagram, the underscore Watchman 256, or send us an email via info at ugwatchman.com, or give us a call via plus 256-780-292-345, or plus 256-755-292-345. The Watchman, for the return of the king, is much sooner than you think.